Welcome to Couch's Corner. I'm your couch captain today, Axel Malibu, and today I'm with uh, one of my uh, esteemed FSC, Fitchburg State College alumni, Matt Keen, or Keen as, as we all seem to know him these days. And uh, today we are talking about puppets. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a multitude of puppets around us here today, and uh, Keen uh, made a ton of these. Somebody made one of them, uh, the other one was bought. And uh, we've used them for a bunch of different shows that we've that we've used. So, Keen, tell us a little bit about some of the puppets we have here today. I uh, will. Uh, oh, and thanks for being on the show, by the way. Oh, no problem. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. So we have some puppets here. Over there, we have Ringo, the yellow one. We have Veronica, his girlfriend, and we got um, the dog, and then Uncle Luke. Luke. Uncle Luke. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. They were all in a show called Matt and Ringo. Great show. One of the best puppet and human live action shows I have ever seen in my life. That's I love one, it. one person's opinion. Yeah. I watch it once a summer. I think it's awesome. I think it's great. So, what else we got over here? Oh, yeah. We've got the scientist here. I was actually at a Renaissance fair for work <laughs> and uh, and there was this uh, tent that were, uh, this, um, this lady and her boyfriend were making uh, puppets so like hey I do a puppet show why don't you um, you know I'll give you a call if I need any more puppets so I told her that I wanted a scientist a bald scientist with a little lab coat <laughs> and a few weeks later I sent the check she sent the uh, puppet, and I was very happy with it. Yeah, I love it. We did one show, but it didn't really work out, so I'm gonna redo it. Is this redo is this it. Underlab? Yeah, the Underlab. That's what it was called. Well, tell us a little bit about the Underlab and the puppet and how that comes together. Well, it was just him. Yeah. And he was gonna be doing like experiments and fun stuff like that, and uh, a lot of different stuff. He had a little guitar and everything, but I actually didn't like it, how it came out, so oh, I just okay. axed the whole thing. But um, yeah, so Geeky and Cheeky is the company that made the puppet. Uh, they're really nice, they're nice people. Do they have a website? They do have a website. Just look it up online. I love yeah. it. It's Geeky and Google Cheeky. Google Geeky and Cheeky online. Yeah, you'll see a lot of puppets and little cool. dolls and stuff. Awesome. Cool, cool. Yeah. By the way, everybody, just to let you all know, uh, we're in a different couch corner today, not in the regular corner that we're normally in, as you can probably tell by this fancy set. And Keen is sitting on uh, today's couch. So in case you're like, hey, what's going on with Couch's Corner today? It's because we're in a different, different couch, different corner. So just want to let you all know that. So um, yeah. So uh, so Keen, tell us a little bit about Matt and Ringo. All right. Well, Matt and Ringo was a show that <laughs> I started with a little Sony Handycam, a uh, high eight, high eight, yep. high eight tapes, back way, 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 way back in uh, like oh seven. <laughs> I think that was seven, eight, oh, eight? nine. I, don't know. I think that was oh eight, if I recall. Probably two thousand eight, oh, eight two thousand nine, probably two thousand eight. Yeah, I, uh, it was on college break. It was like a Thanksgiving break or... I, we had like a week off. Maybe it was spring break or something know. like that. There was something. And I, just, I always wanted to do a puppet show. And um, it was good because I didn't have to rely on anyone else except myself. It wasn't, it's not the best show. It's kind oh, of... Oh, no. It, it's, it's made... It is the best show. It is not made... Up to my standards, yeah, but well. I had fun making it, and um, took about like a day to shoot, and then a couple of days to edit, like seven hours straight just to edit. It was fun. Uh, yeah, that's okay. It, it's uh, the two DVD, one well, season one, season two. <laughs> yeah. Which no one has except, except this guy. Except this guy. <laughs> and no one else will have it. <laughs> It's not uh, online at all anymore, right? Yeah, I have, I have, oh, sorry. I have it at home, uh, both seasons. And then, you no, know, online, I took it off online because there were some adult situations in it. Yeah, well. Which I didn't want everyone to see. But, um, yeah, so you have the only 
I think the only copy. like physical copy of it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I hope those DVDs never break. I'll have to like rip them on my computer and just make sure that they're always safe. Uh, so yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember when that happened. I remember you went on YouTube. I remember this like it was yesterday. You went on YouTube and there was some guy who had a couple of videos of how to make puppets and like yeah. how to do puppeteering. Yeah. And you were like, and you were like, hey guys, I'm gonna go make a puppet show while we're on break, and we're like, okay, great, have fun. And like, you know, I had no idea what to expect. And next thing you know, you came back and you're like, hey guys, check out this puppet show. And it was the first episode. And it was Matt and Ringo with this guy right here. Mm. And I thought it was awesome. I thought it was so cool. And then your second episode came. I remember, like, yeah, you did it in like a weekend or something like that. And then, yeah. uh, and then I did, I remember I waited and you made the new one with the dog in it. And I remember it was like a wicked sad episode. I was like, whoa, what happened to this show? But, um, yeah, the dog gets shot in the face. Yeah, it was crazy. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, like I was going to see it. <laughs> I was going to see it but, anyway. But, Keen, um, quick question for you. What was your favorite episode of Matt and Ringo, honestly? Oh, it's a tough one. There's so many. I'm trying to think. How many um, episodes even were there? I mean, there was like, I think like a, I think it was like 15. No. No, not 15. Was it like 11? Oh, man. Something I've, like that. I told my brother we got to re rewatch him. Yeah. He was I the, watch uh, it once every summer. He, I don't know why. It's like a it's like a tradition for me. He was the uh, video clerk in it. And yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, he was great on the show. He was awesome on the show. I had a good wait, time. Was he the only human character besides me? Yes. Yes, he was. You played a couple different characters. You were yourself plus. The news guy. You were the news guy. guy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, I was like wicked bummed out when it ended. You know what I mean? I thought it was great. And hey, if I win the lottery, <laughs> I'll go back to making Matt and Ringo. Yeah, okay? that'd be awesome. But that'd right cool. now, I'm just kind of involved in um, other stuff, like uh, animation stuff that yep. I'm. Yep, Marty's Nine do, and all yeah. that. And, um, you know, one day maybe I'll go back. We'll see. You plan on doing some more underlab stuff soon, or? Yeah, I don't know, not right now, but I do have plans for this guy, okay. the scientist guy. Are you thinking about making any more puppets? Oh, by the way, everybody, just so that way you know, the, I don't know if I mentioned this, these puppets were all made by Keen. Keen made all these, and your mom did the sewing, right? She did the sewing. What's it like to make sewing one of is, these things? Oh, to, um, just the idea. Just, if you could, like, explain the process of making, like, Ringo. Okay. The biggest part is the sewing. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's the biggest part, which she did, and I tried to. I just don't have the patience. Yeah. Like, the needle gets lost, and then, <laughs> oh, my God. Did she use a machine to do it by hand? A uh, machine. Wow. Like, cool. so, yeah. 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 But um, basically, I'll take the fabric, cut it, and then she'll, she'll sew it, and then turn it inside out. And then we stuff it with the stuffing. Cool. And oh yeah, also in the head, we put that foam, foamy stuff in the head to yeah. make it, you know, have a head. Sure. Cool. But um, yeah, that's how we did it. And they're not exactly the the most. Look, they're, like they're, the head just gonna. Yeah, they're not like Jim Henson like material. This guy right here. This guy's professionally made. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's pretty how I made it. Cool. I did. I did a video on how to make the little figurine. Oh the, yeah, the I remember figurines. that. Where you you burned yourself with a hot glue gun. Yeah, which apparently yeah. was your best friend, and you know. I hate the glue gun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you glue everything. You glue the hair. The uh, oh, also cardboard cereal boxes for the mouth. Yeah. And then just hot glue that. How out of you, it? Where do you get all the material for us from? Uh, Joint Fabrics. Joint, Joint Fabrics, yeah. Cool. You know how they have those fabrics at Joint Fabrics? It's like for blankets or it's just like patterns of stuff. What if you made a puppet made out of like a bunch of Superman logos? Like and, a quilt? Well, you, you, know how, you know how when you go to Joint Fabrics, it's just, just a bunch of fabrics, right? Yeah. You know how they have like, like, um, like fleece and stuff? Where it's, yeah. you know, you make like pajamas out of them and they're yeah. just like a bunch of logos or... You know, whatever. What if you made a puppet that was just like a bunch of that, you know? Like a big melting pot of just random yeah, stuff? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah, it would. Yeah. So, like, what inspired you to, to, to do, to get into the puppet stuff? Was it just those websites on YouTube? Or, like, did you watch, like, Jim Henson stuff as a kid? Or, like, what got you into that stuff? 
Yeah, back when I was a kid, I did watch a little um, Jim Henson stuff. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I forget what it was, but also, which is really cool, uh, for, there's a show called Fur TV. I guess it was like a few episodes. Yeah. It was on MTV UK, and um, it's a funny show. Yeah. And also, there's um, on YouTube, there's uh, Glove and Boots. There's a show called, I don't know what it's called, but yeah. um, there's two puppets. Just Google it. Fafa and, what was that one? I don't remember. Uh, but it was an M. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Fafa <laughs> is a gopher. I had it written down. Dude, the hilarious. The, the other guy, he's like a weird, like red. He looks like animal a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he looks like animal. Yeah. Yeah. And the hilarious, uh, I think so. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. I don't know. It could be something else. But I don't know. Puppets are awesome. Yeah, I mean, I love puppets. I uh, like with Creepy Castle. Like, in case the audience doesn't know, I my, my other shows is Creepy Castle. This is Warren the Dragon, from Creepy Castle, and. Um, you know, he's got a little tongue that sticks out and stuff, you know, and he's got his wings and things like that. And, yeah, I watched a ton of Jim Henson when I was a kid, like everything, like all the Muppet stuff and everything. And um, I was supposed to do Creepy Castle with no puppets. And I was supposed to do it with Paul, who is on Python Force, you know, who you know. And uh, we were supposed to be two completely different characters. And then the day came, or like the day before came, and he was like, uh, I'm not prepared to shoot it. I don't know. I, I don't want to do it. So then I had to kind of rush and think like, oh, man, what am I going to do? I have to shoot Creepy Castle tomorrow. And I called up Chris, my buddy Chris, and I said, hey, uh, we got we to gotta do it. Can you help me out tomorrow? He's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you out. And, uh, and I had no idea what I was going to do for Creepy Castle at that point. I literally, like overnight, I had to think of the storyline and what to do. And I was just going through like all my props and all my stuff. And I found this dragon that my folks bought me when I was a lot younger. I think I was like, they're down around 10, something like that. And they're like, hey, maybe you can use it for your videos. And I never use it. It just sat around. I never, never used it. I was like, why did you guys get me this? I never use it. And um, I don't know what to do with it. And uh, then I was like, oh, I want to have a dragon on the show. I'm going to have it called Creepy Castle. It's a castle, right? Dragons. And then it just became the landlord and... You know, and, and all that stuff. So, that yeah. That was an awesome idea. Yeah. So, and that just kind of was spaghetti that got thrown on the wall and it stuck pretty good. <laughs> right? You know, and, you know, so it worked out really good. So, that's how Warren came to be. And there's like another puppet on the show, which I didn't bring today, which is a one time episode, which might. What was it? It was Dolores. She's a witch. Do you remember that episode? I don't know if I do. Um, Dolores. Was a, there's three puppets that came with this guy. Um, it was a wizard and a witch. I've never used a wizard on anything else. I've used the witch on one episode of Creepy Castle. She's Dolores. She lives next door to the Creepy Castle. And uh, she flies around. And Which episode is it? It's an episode where she came in to the Creepy Castle. And Warren and, and, and myself, who play the Cryptmeister, uh, we decided that we didn't want to be like creepy, ghouly characters anymore. We wanted to be like regular people. Like we just wanted to look like regular people. Granted, uh, the Crimmeister just could have like shaved his mustache, got a haircut, and wore like you know a pair of Levi's and a T-shirt. But you know whatever. Uh, so she gave us like a magic potion that we drank, and we traded. I gave her. Uh, an Andrew Dice Clay movie on VHS as a trade for her to give us this potion that turned us into regular people. You remember I think I one? missed that episode. Really? Yeah. Dude, I thought you've seen like all of them. <laughs> I, I did, but I, I, that one I guess kind of... That's an earlier one. That's back when we were using the green screen back in the day. I remember when I tried to be the puppet, I was horrible at it. Oh, oh, just that way everybody knows. Oh, wow, I totally worst. forgot about that. Oh, yeah, so... so Back in the day, I was working at the Waltham station, which is where we started doing Creepy Castle. And my buddy Chris, who lives near me in Worcester, uh, he came. You know, I, you know, he and I drove all the way up to Waltham to shoot the first episode of Creepy Castle. And you, since you live in Randolph, I was like, oh man, it's so much easier for you to come down because you only live a couple minutes away. So I figured like, it would be so much easier for you to just come down and be the and be the the dragon. And we shot that, that second episode of Creepy Castle. 
where you played the Manster as well. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, that was horrible. I thought that was a good I thought, well, I thought you were good as the Manster. That was great. Remember when we filled the 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 head up with like Cheez Its and stuff? Yeah. That was cool. How to, but, how but, to do a um double head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Manster yeah, there. Yeah. But um but yeah, I just think I don't know, Chris uh Chris kinda hit it off with being Warren as the yeah, character. He's really good with voices. He just he just did a uh, voice of one of my animations. So. Oh, the new Bigfoot one, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm probably gonna run that off like either tonight or tomorrow morning and send that off to you. So, nice. um, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things where I guess the character, the person's got to fit with with who you know. It's it's not like not anybody can just put their hand you know in the mouth thing and then just do it. I mean, there's yeah. you gotta you know you gotta kind of know the character. Like the guy that did Elmo. Yeah, exactly. Or any of those guys. I mean, you seen that documentary? No, no, that's up on Netflix, right? Yeah, no, I haven't. I was going to see it. I haven't seen it yet, but um, yeah, I've yet to see it. Um, but uh, you know, really, it's it's a you got to kind of know the character. Plus, too, Chris would always do a thing where, like, you know, where there's a lot that goes into the stuff. Where, like, you know, with facial expressions, like if he's like disgusted, or to go hmm, like that, <laughs> you know, and uh, to show that, uh, you know, to show that he's like angry, or like. Hmm, or, or he's like, he's like upset, or or you know something smelled bad. He'd be like, hmm? you know, or or whatever. Like, or if he's happy, ah, have the mouth out, ha ha ha, ha you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love I love Chris doing the puppet. Yeah, he's he's a natural. He's, he's at a natural. It. He's, yeah. He really knows what he's doing, you know. Um, and especially because it's all unscripted, he can come yeah, up with stuff. Seriously, on everything the fly. everything that he says. Well, not everything, but a lot of stuff that he, that he comes up with is just, I laugh. Oh, it's great. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. he's, he's so good at playing this character. You know, just he, yeah. he just rabbles off stuff. And that's right how you are. You're there. like, oh, ad lib. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you know, The whole show is totally on the fly. Yeah. And I just really like the fact that, you know, he's so good at being able to take this character. And plus, he stays in the theme of like, okay, he's a landlord. And, you know, uh, you know so he'll, he'll always say stuff that's related to that and how I'm his tenant as the Cryptmeister. So, you know, it's like in the in one of the last episodes we said, Oh no, there's a there's a ghost in the house, you know, or, you know, we think there's somebody in the house. And then he'll be like, hey, why do I pay ADT for? And stuff <laughs> like that. Or, or it'll be like, hey, that's coming out of your security deposit. You know, he'll say little things like that that relate to How many different you know, sets have you had on the show? On Creepy Castle? Yeah, they well, had the, the fireplace with the fire. Yeah, yeah. The original the, TV. the original episode was yeah, the the original which was Probably my favorite. I really like that original set mm. of uh, you know because we had that cool like Asian Oriental rug on the ground and uh, and we had the TV on the ground that was like the fireplace and, yeah. and granted it only lasted two episodes and then you know because I left Waltham so I oh. couldn't go back there anymore uh, you yeah. know to go work at my new job so yeah. and I couldn't do it at my new job which is here at this set um, but uh, uh, to shoot the show because it would at that point having Chris do the show anymore. It would be such a pain to do the show here, like yeah. on a weekend. You know what I mean? Just to go. So I started doing it back in my hometown station, in Shrewsbury, and we started the off shoes. doing the green screen stuff. But I was shooting it on DV cam, tape, and the the quality was terrible. Wait, how'd you start doing Python Force? Python Force. Well, the first episode of Python Force was the same thing, DV cam tape, and the quality was really bad. So now we just take an SDHC card and we put it into the camera. We just shoot it with one camera in front of the big green screen and uh, the full body green screen over there. And uh, uh, so we shoot it in full 1080, like complete high def. So that way it keys out extremely good. And that's why it looks so crisp now, as yeah. opposed to before when it was all like, you see the <laughs> yeah. jittering and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, like if you watch the first episode of Python Force, or those first couple of green screen episodes of Creepy Castle, you know, I mean, granted, I could go back to doing green screen Creepy Castle, doing it that way. But I really like it the way we do it now. It's so much less work. Where, yeah, yeah. Um, where we put up, you know, I have like the fake stone wall. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of green screen. Like I don't get me wrong, I love green screen. I absolutely love it. But it, you just got to know how to do it right and you use yeah, it right. Yeah, you got to be like know? wicked, wicked precise. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I've actually keyed Warren. I, I've keyed Warren here because he's green and. Yeah, stuff like that, but he, no, he's actually worked out really well. Was it a blue screen or a green screen? Green screen. No, it actually worked out really good. I've never used a blue screen before, but um, but yeah, you know, uh, it's pretty neat. You know, when you get to, it, like, it, what I'm trying to say is, um, I don't think Creepy Castle would be the same if it wasn't for Warren, and I think that that would be the same. Like, if you, you know, like if you if you had done Matt and Ringo, 
right? Without Ringo? <laughs> and, and you didn't have it with puppets. Let's say you had me and, some of the, and Dave or some of the other guys from home or from school come down and we did the show and we were just regular people doing the show. It mm. wouldn't have the same effect. Like there's some real charm and just coolness to having a puppet. puppets on the show. You know what I mean? It adds like a totally different level of character to the show. You know what I mean? Especially like, you know, like in Creepy Castle. I could have had, like, you know the guy, my buddy Kevin, who plays Sal Swetcheski? Yeah. Like, what if I had had him, you know, the sleazeball guy who was always smoking butts, what if I had just had him come out and if he just played uh, Warren instead? You know, if I just had the sleazeball guy who was the, the, the landlord of the Creepy Castle, right? No. It wouldn't Puppets be the same. go with anything. Oh, seriously. They could yeah. be, they could be uh, uh, for children, for adults. Yeah. Whatever. It's great, you know? Um, so I just think that having that extra level of entertainment with a puppet definitely adds to it. And anybody who I talk to who has seen Creepy Castle, they're always saying, like, wow. Uh, like, the first thing they always say is, man, I love the puppet. Yeah. I love the dragon puppet. Actually, there was one time a guy thought it was a dog. And he's like, oh, man, I love that puppet dog on the show. I was like, no, it's, it's a dragon. No, it's not a dog, you know. That's yeah. funny. But, um, yeah, man, I, I just think that adding puppets to, to stuff like, like that. Like Sesame Street? No one talks about the random guys that... Yeah, like whatever his name was, Dave or something like I that. Don't, I Bill, don't watch I don't it know. anymore, but... Yeah, yeah, the show would not be the same without, um, like, Servo and Crow and the other guys who were on the show sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, but, but, yeah, man, like, I just think it's great having puppets on the show. It just adds so much to the show you know so it's crazy like i wish i had like a ton of money to spend on that's like i said if i win the lottery I, yeah, you and I, I, yeah we're doing puppet get like shows. real professional like jim henson quality uh oh, dude, puppets we're like, on there we'll go into a room the whole list of ideas i know <laughs> throw down some money yeah and then we'll get them absolutely we want these by friday you know yeah right and just yeah it's funny too because like you know how how at first, when you first have a puppet, and it's just totally, it's like a blank slate. Like, even though, okay, you have a puppet that's themed, like your, like your scientist puppet there. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, obviously we know it's like a puppet, or it could be a teacher, or it could, it could be an old guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very ambiguous. Yeah. And the funny thing is that then the puppeteer gives it that character, right? Like, so you have it as the mad scientist. I have, you know, you have Ringo... Who has the the voice? I don't know what Ringo is. He's just a puppet. You know? Well, yeah, but like you know, so like and then like Warren here, you know, he has that accent, that heavy accent to mm. him. And the thing is, like, once you give, once the puppeteer gives the puppet that character, it's like it stays like glue. Like I couldn't think of this puppet. You know, I mean, like if I just took the puppet now, you know, if I just, you know, if I get my hand in here, if I just be like. Hey guys, I'm Roy the Dragon. All right, Ugh. right? Yeah. It's not the same, as opposed to him yeah, being but, but Warren. So, yeah, because you know about the show. Exactly. Because the other thing is, like now, it's like he always, to me or to people who watch Creepy Castle, he'll always be known as, you know, Hey, I am Warren. I talk like this. You yeah. know what I mean? He'll always yeah. not to, you know, put any. I, I obviously I can't sound as good as Chris doing the Warren voice, but yeah, I mean, Chris, uh, is, Chris is awesome. Though. You know what I mean? So it's like it's one of those things where it just uh, he, he kind of like it's like he's like thinking like Kermit the Frog. Could you could you think of Kermit talking like this? You know, no. He's like, oh hi ho everyone, I'm <laughs> Kermit the Frog. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. everybody knows Kermit as talking like that, having the mannerisms yeah. and all that that character that it has. You know what I'm saying? Whereas even though it's a basically a, a puppet is this ambiguous. Uh, tool that we could use that could play multiple multiple characters once you have that character play that one that's how you think of it kind of like any movie or an actor you know sometimes you you got uh, uh, whatever you have an actor that's played one character you know you got friggin Michael J. Fox right Michael J. Fox has played a ton of different people but everybody knows him as Marty McFly yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. so it's like one of those things like Steve Urkel or, yeah or like Julia White <laughs> who Julia played White, Steel, yeah. Steve Urkel Sure, he's been in a couple of the movies and TV shows or whatever, but everybody knows him as that one character. A lot of uh, like puppets for kids will have high voices. Oh, sure. Like Ringo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ringo but had like, a high voice, yeah. Like for the scientists, I kind of uh, thought about, like, what if I was in the bathroom taking a dump? 
and he'd be like, what are you doing over there? Um, you know what's funny? That's the same voice as Uncle Luke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because they're old, old guys. Yeah. Hello. You know, that kind of thing. And now, science. I don't know. I've, I've lost it, but I'll get it back. Yeah. I think it'd be awesome, personally, if you did a green screen show with that. Is there a name for this guy for Underlab? Not yet, no. Okay. Because I just thought it'd be cool to do some kind of uh, green screen thing where the background is like, you know, the mad scientist layer, you know what I mean? And maybe up front you had something else. Yeah, I was you know actually, what I'm saying? I was actually thinking about um, doing a bunch of little uh, flasks and stuff, real life yeah. flasks, and have um, like, a, like a solar system in cool. the background and stuff. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but actual, actual real background, not just green screen. But, uh, yeah. Cool. That's, that's awesome. That's about, about that. Awesome. Well, that sounds great, dude. I really appreciate you coming down and sure. going up into the attic and, and finding all of your old puppets. And it, yeah. For me, it brings no. back a lot of good memories Ringo, from Matt and Ringo. Ringo is still in the room. Oh, but good. The, these guys were in the attic. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I, I really, again, I really appreciate you bringing all these down here today and showing us uh, your new professional one that's, that you, that's made here, your, your, your underlab oh. yeah, no. guy. And uh, I think it's great. And... You know, uh, I, I plan for as long as I keep doing TV shows and stuff, I want to have puppets yeah. in there. I mean, even though obviously I'm doing Couch's Corner and Python Forest, like with Creepy Castle and stuff, I always want to do a project that includes puppets because uh, I just think it's great. You know what I mean? I, I love this stuff. So. It's a good time. Yeah. So, all right, dude. Well, uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for being on Couch's Corner today, man. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Cool, cool. Awesome. Alrighty, well I hope you all enjoyed uh, Couch's Corner today and all the really cool puppets. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you right back here next time on Couch's Corner.